Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. I can't be the only one who's holding on to some, quite frankly, ugly pieces in their wardrobe for no apparent reason. Whether it's something that should have stayed in the 2010s or just something that was questionable from the very beginning, for some reason, I have a hard time letting go. In the series so far, I feel like we've had moderate success in bringing items back to life, but this is definitely gonna be our biggest challenge today. Keeping me hopeful though is none other than Carrie Bradshaw. I'm currently watching Sex and the City and have realized that at least half of her wardrobe is low key ugly but she still makes it work love it or hate it she is turning out some iconic outfits which got me thinking maybe we just need to be looking at things from a new perspective so this isn't actually going to be a full Carrie Bradshaw lookbook but she will be popping up on mood boards for a few of the looks you guys know I love a good tv or film reference when it comes to fashion sometimes though it feels like you've exhausted all possible options on your current streaming services which is where today's video sponsor comes in clutch award-winning VPN Surfshark which allows you to access content from around the world and protect yourself online. Surfshark is a virtual private network available as an app or browser extension which you can download now via the link in the description box or the QR code on screen and then you too will be able to quickly and easily change your location settings and instantly have access to a ton of content that's not usually available in your region. From anime to k-dramas, teen tv, drag race, you name it, your options really do become endless. And of course, it's as important as ever to make sure you're browsing securely online. Surfshark do this through various methods, including adding an extra layer of protection when you're using public Wi-Fi and by preventing companies and bots from tracking your personal information. As some of you probably know, I've been using Surfshark for over three years now, and I love that they offer unlimited devices under just one account. You can get an exclusive deal with my code SPOTLIGHT. At the moment, they're offering up to three extra months for free. And since Surfshark offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, you can try it all risk-free for yourself via the link in the description box or by scanning the QR code on screen. This is the sort of thing I mean when I'm talking about having a Carrie Bradshaw moment. It's this pair of denim capris with the cutest little flower embroidery. Capris is one of those things that is somewhat polarizing. To a certain extent, they are trending again, but I feel like it's not gonna reach the mainstream like it once did just because they are so difficult to style. I think it's because they're already cutting you off at an awkward length. So if you pick the wrong shoe, it's just gonna make it even worse. But when I saw this particular pair at the op shop for under $5, I thought it was worth the risk. I think in order to pull off the capri, we need to keep it simple, aka throughout all of my usual styling tendencies, otherwise I'm going to end up looking like a Disney child star. When you see someone like Carrie style it, it's usually just with a simple little top, so I've got three options, all in the pink family of course, to try and match in with the flower detail, but I mean, let's be real, I just love wearing pink. Okay, this is a more difficult decision than I thought it was going to be. I thought there'd be like one clear standout, but I genuinely liked them all, but trying it on with the shoes, this is like the only dainty pair that I own, which like I said, I feel like it's a necessity when it comes to this sort of length and since they do lean a little bit more pink I think that rules this one out so one of these two. I know I said to keep it simple but in the context of what would Carrie do I think she would consider this flower belt simple so I'm going for it. I think this is the most shocked I've been in one of these videos. I really thought it would take at least 10 attempts styling these capris and by the end of it I still wouldn't like it. But I've proven myself wrong. I love this outfit. Like, I am ready to go for brunch with the girls right now. I don't know if I made this clear enough at the beginning of the video, but I don't necessarily hate all of these items, especially this next one. I like it so much, in fact, that I decided to DIY the tie skirt myself. But I see this ripped to shreds online, particularly that one image of Aria in Pretty Little Liars. So I guess it's not necessarily ugly pieces, but just things that are polarizing. Like, you either love it or hate it. Do you really have neutral feelings about a tie skirt? Mine's a combo of blue, purple, and gray. I do wish it was red instead. I feel like I just get so much more wear out of it, but this is just what was easily accessible at the op shop. I guess it is kind of like the color palette of the businessman. I do wear a lot of blue though, so I don't know why I don't reach for it more. I mean, like, could we even style it with today's top maybe? I don't know. So it turns out, yes, it does somewhat go with this shirt. I think it's cute, but definitely missing a layer. I know story of my life. I kind of went back and forward with some jacket options. And I don't know if you're going to like the one I chose, particularly if you're not a fan of that Pretty Little Liars era of fashion, because I've gone with a cropped blazer. I feel like it's been quite some time since this has been the go-to option. It has been all about the oversized blazer for a very long time at this point. But I feel like once you see it on, you really can't deny that this is the proportion the skirt needs. When I just walked out to check in the mirror, Sam said it looked like I was off to an 80s concert, which first of all, I wish I was. But second of all, I can see his point because that is probably one of the only places where you would expect to potentially see a collective of people wearing cropped blazers. I feel like the Short Kings have really kept that legacy 
your life. Okay, I don't even know what to say for this one because never in my life did I think I would get on here and hold up a sneaker heel. This, I did not even like the first time around. I did not see the vision. I think I had um, like a knockoff Isabel Morant sneaker wedge which I don't actually know which one is worse. So probably the craziest thing about these is it's not something that I've had tucked away in the back of my wardrobe for years and years. This is a recent purchase. Have I lost my mind? Potentially, but I know exactly who to blame and it's whoever does the styling for twice. If you're ever wondering what's going on inside my brain, it's this performance every single day since I've seen it. I swear it comes up on my TikTok feed constantly. I'm gonna like it every single time. Specifically, Neon is styled in a really similar little sneaker boot that is kind of reminiscent of the Fenty Pumas. And I did try and search for a good deal on those secondhand, but had no luck. So I ended up settling for these, which are actually for a referee costume. <laughs> Honestly though, especially from the front, I feel like it just looks like a soleil little boot. I really wanted to make the red work because I feel like the hat is so spot on to what Nyon originally wore but something about it all just isn't clicking on me for some reason. I think I really needed a different top to team with the skirt but Nothing in my wardrobe was really working. I'm not super into like the sporty sort of vibe, but this little velour bubble hem dress is the perfect mix of cutie while still encapsulating the original vibe of the stage performance. So with a few tweaks, I think we're able to look at it as an alternate option if Nyan was to perform this song again. Yeah, I feel like you're probably thinking, how on earth are you including this in today's video when it's literally currently trending? And I hear you, okay? Don't come for me. I also am in the camp of leopard print is a neutral. I have worn it throughout my entire life. So this isn't a generalization. I'm talking about this specific dress. Hopefully you get what I mean. Like not all leopard print is created equal. This one to me does seem tacky rather than timeless. And I think it's because it almost feels like a more digital print version of it. So it feels very 2010s. Also just the quality of it. It's been printed onto a plain white stretch fabric, which I think often doesn't look good when fully stretched out. So if you're looking for something that you want to be a timeless piece in your wardrobe, make sure you're being mindful of quality. And I'm not even necessarily saying you have to spend a fortune in order to get that because I have other leopard items that I've had for just as long, if not longer. And they were also originally just from a fast fashion brand, but they've held up so much better. It's been a really long time since I've actually worn this dress. And now that I've tried it on, I'm like, whoops, I don't actually hate it as much as I thought I did. The fit is really nice. It's literally just the print that I have issue with, but how am I supposed to magically fix that with styling? I thought it'd be perfect to layer some texture in this look though, because I think that's actually what the pattern's problem is. It feels very one dimensional. I gotta go with the classic 90s boot because the silhouette of the dress is already giving me very buffy. Honestly, I think just adding sunglasses and a pop of color with the bag and you've got a cute summer going out outfit. But I also like the idea of accessorizing with this cap and a motor jacket. Same red bag still works. I just changed out some of the accessories for something a little bit chunkier just to match the energy of the jacket. I really like both of them. I guess it would just depend on your style, but you guys know me. I'm indecisive. I like everything. Now there's just absolutely no excuse for this one. I don't even have words. I'm just gonna hold it up. Yeah. It's a plastic shirt. When is appropriate to wear this. What's even worse is that I think I bought this in 2019. I wore it once for a video. I don't think I can even will myself to put this on. You just know it's gonna be sweaty. I nearly chickened out, but no, I'm here. I'm attempting to style the impossible. So far, all my thought process has gotten me is make it look like it belongs in Fruits Magazine. I felt like going with a one piece under it was gonna be the easiest base. I chose this stripy one that has so many colors. So hopefully we can make something work. Um, Honestly, I'm just gonna go off camera. Hopefully I come back with something. Ta-da, this is what I came up with. I know by no, you can barely see the shirt. It's kind of covered up, but to be fair, it is transparent. So it doesn't really matter what you do. You can't really see it. I think what would really help to highlight it though is if you actually did all cutesy stickers splattered over it to kind of match in what I've done with my beanie. If I was styling this for some sort of shoot, that is definitely what I would do. But just for like 10 seconds in a video, I don't want to waste my stickers, I'm sorry. Honestly, I'm still not gonna wear it again. At the end of the day, it is torture to get it on and off but I like that it got me thinking outside the box get my creative juices flowing for example the beanie I am dying to style this again one thing about me is that I have always been a hat person I just love headwear accessories obviously different ones have peaks of popularity I hold on to everything because you never know what the situation is going to call for I've definitely seen a lot of hate for the classic baker boy hat over the years but I do think that it is slowly making its return something that I feel is almost adjacent to it and I've seen people say how much they hate it on TikTok recently is a beanie with a brim this looks like something 
something straight out of a 2000s Disney Channel original. So I can see where people are coming from. I loved these at the time. Only actually it was worse. The one I wore to death was a visor version. Obviously not my finest moment, okay? But I stand by it. Like I said, hat girly for life. I feel like one of the easiest ways to upgrade old accessories at the moment is just to decorate them. We've seen it with shoes and bags. So I decided to do the same with this hat. I didn't go too crazy, just added a clip and a pair of earrings. But yeah, that kind of determined the direction I wanted to take the rest of the look in. I stuck with the same minimal color palette. And because I'd already gone with this extra effort in the accessories, I actually wanted to keep the fit itself quite relaxed. Hence the oversized flowy nature of the top and skirt. The shirt itself has so much going on that I usually don't really add too many necklaces. But in this instance, since there's not much else going on, I thought it could be cool to kind of bring it to life with a couple of 3D necklaces as well. I really love how it turned out. It's super comfy as well. So I think it'd be great for an exploring the city shopping day. I will say though, I think it might be better suited to someone with darker hair or at least someone who's going to put a toner through their blonde because something about the yellow is kind of clashing with this particular shade of gray. Something I see at the thrift store a lot and in the discounted clearance section, mind you. So you know people have been passing over these time and time again, but apparently I'm a sucker for are these really loud, what some people would consider tacky prints. I don't know, to me, there's just something charming about it. It's almost like my version of the ugly Christmas sweater, I guess, but I could definitely see a lot of people hating them. And you know what? To be fair, I haven't exactly gotten much wear out of them, but surely at least some of you are also seeing the potential here. Okay, this is the one I wanna try and style today because I instantly fell in love with the print the moment I saw it. The color combination is very me. My issue with it is that the fit isn't really giving, like it's that awkward in between, it's not fitted, but I wouldn't necessarily consider it oversized either. So to start off with, we definitely need to try and cinch it. I wasn't sure if I should just go all in and style it with another bold pattern. I feel like it could potentially be fun, but realistically, I'd feel a lot more comfortable wearing my trusty cream lace skirt. I like it, but I think I'd prefer if I hiked it up into a mini. To break up the print of it so it's not so full on, I'm gonna add a vest, just picking out one of the colors that are already within the shirt. I actually scratch that. I feel like that makes it blend in too much. We really need something that's gonna provide a little bit more contrast. Yeah, I think this dark purple one works a lot better, and we can still bring in red through the accessories. Let's just be real. If you're not a fan of bold prints and bold colors, I was never gonna be able to change your mind you probably hate this outfit. It's definitely an acquired taste. Honestly, I feel like it's even on the outskirts of my comfort zone, which is definitely saying something. But if nothing else, I feel like the outfit formula itself is pretty solid. So you could definitely take this and apply it to a more muted color palette if necessary. My original plan was to sell this pair of American Apparel Disco pants because I used to live in these and now I look back and I'm like, what the hell were you thinking? The problem is I can't guarantee that I can actually zip these up anymore. I feel like it might be dependent on the day, so we definitely need a backup, which is just the close relative. I feel like the Jamie Topshop skinny jeans, definitely popular around the same era. Disco pants died out a lot quicker than skinny jeans did, which kind of makes sense. Jeans, if it works for you, it works for you keep wearing it but cannot deny that in the fashion street interviews if someone's asked their unpopular opinion most hated item it's always skinny jeans which i mean at this point you can't claim that as an unpopular opinion if everyone is saying it like it's getting to the point where i'm genuinely feeling sorry for a pair of jeans which is ridiculous but i'm just saying let's cut them some slack okay because they still do work in the context of certain styles for example you guys love ayazawa fashion her characters do be wearing their pants Height. Probably like grade nine, I would have thrown on an exact combo like this, probably teamed it up with some Converse and thought I ate, but my style has definitely evolved since then. So let's find the right layers. The options I was thinking of was this little skirt, which I actually think would team beautifully with the jeans, but I would have to switch out the top because the font on it is just too stark of a white. This super mini, but very voluminous black dress, I thought it could be used to kind of counterbalance how tight the bottoms are, but Honestly, I think it's doing too much. And then my last option is this wraparound skirt, which I think I can make work if I kind of gather it just the right way. I was always envisioning the jeans tucked into these particular boots. Now that I've got it on, I'm not entirely sold though. It just feels a bit disjointed. So I think I want to find something to kind of bring this creamy color into the bottom half and then also probably a belt to break up the shirt. I feel like it's still just feeling unbalanced. So we need an outerwear option. And I feel like my go-tos for this sort of aesthetic are either my leopard coat, a plaid one, 
or my half blazer, half denim situation. I feel like it's possible, it meets the brief of could be in the Ayazawa universe. I could totally see one of the characters wearing this as their stage performance outfit. My issue is, would I wear it? No. I think I'd do pretty much everything exactly the same, but I'd switch out the skinny jeans for a skirt. So if that's the case, I'm not sure this was actually successful. Okay, this one feels a little bit personal the mullet skirt because these high-low hemlines had so many of us in a chokehold throughout the 2010s and I don't really know why it was a thing but I can see it making a comeback just because we've had maxi lengths and minis trending at the same time for so long now that it feels like the natural progression is to combine the two. Actually if you think about it it's kind of already back like they're trying to deceive us by twisting it to the side but I know what you are. Hopefully this isn't cheating because I guess it's not a full mullet like the back isn't maxi but the idea is there. Regardless I'm just obsessed with this. I kind of took inspiration from k-pop styling more generalized rather than a particular group. Obviously at this point everyone's done the fuzzy hat. As far as the shirt corset tie combo I took inspiration from key and then these sort of skirts I feel like are very popular when it comes to boy group styling for a more gender neutral look I think I've convinced myself with this one if mullet skirts are back I'm okay with that let me know your thoughts did I change your mind on any of these honestly I don't even know if I'm convinced maybe at this point it is just time to give up and of course another big thank you to today's video sponsor Surfshark remember now you can just scan the QR code on screen but as always all the links and info in the description box as well and also I don't think I've mentioned it yet but I'm actually going on a trip next week. So if you want to follow me over on Instagram and TikTok, there should be some fun content coming soon. But yeah, otherwise, thank you for watching and hopefully I see you again here really, really soon. Bye!